Hi, this is Scott Schrader, and we're here today to talk about Parasha, Parasha Haya Sara. And I'd like to take some gleanings out of Genesis 24 today. And in it, we see the story of uh, Eliezer and uh, the servant. We know his name from Genesis 15 too. It's not actually in uh, Genesis 24. But he is the senior servant for uh, Abraham, Abraham. And Abraham sends him to go find a bride for Isaac. So he's sent to see the bride. Um, uh, interesting about Isaac is that he is the son of the promise, and he had a miraculous birth, and he was sacrificed willingly. Now, does that sound kind of interesting? Uh, you know, uh, he was probably about 17 years old, and some estimate even older, uh, when he was uh, set up to be sacrificed there on Mount Maria or Mount Moriah. And uh, Abraham was 117 years old. So. <laughs> Uh, it stands to reason that it was not likely that Abraham could wrestle him down and, and kept, catch him, let alone wrestle him down and put him up on the altar. So he, uh, it's believed that he did that willingly. And so we see these three uh, attributes there. Um, Rebecca was uh, chose to go with Eliezer. And she chose to do that. When he came, uh, it, it, actually it was a prophetic thing. Ab Abraham uh, told him to go and he would find a bride among his brethren. Um, and it was actually uh, his brother's uh, son's daughter uh, that uh, I guess would be his niece, that uh, Rebecca was his niece and from the old land. But he did not allow Isaac to go out of the land. And there's some interesting theories about that. Uh, but um, and because uh, in uh, Jewish thought, um, Isaac was chose to be an Ola, a, an offering and he was sanctified, therefore he could not go out of the land of Israel, and he could not have more than one wife. Uh, that was kind of a, it's a kind of a Jewish idea. But um, Abraham did not want Isaac to go back there from where he had come from, and uh, he felt that he would be tarnished there. And there's another uh, Jewish uh, uh, theory about this, or story, that you find, or Midrash uh, teaching, is that that was not a very good neighborhood that he had come from. And uh, that's one of the reasons why uh, Eliezer wanted to get Rebecca out of there right away. It wasn't a very good neighborhood. And she was still a virgin, and, and uh, he was fearful that if she stayed there, uh, that could something could happen to her. So uh, these are some stories that, that come out of that, uh, and there may be some truth to those. But in any case, Rebecca chose to go. And uh, they asked her first. They asked, uh, you know, the uncle and 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 the uh, actually the mother and the brother, you know, uh, Laban, which we Jacob uh, actually had some encounters with later. Uh, they asked them, and they wanted her to stay for a little while, and uh, but Eliezer wanted to go right away, and so well, let's ask Rebecca, and she said she would go, and so she went right away, and. Um, so Eliezer brought Rebecca back immediately, immediately. Now Eliezer didn't speak of himself, and this is an interesting thing. He uh, is believed to be a type of the Holy Spirit. He didn't speak of himself, and the Holy Spirit, we see in John 16, 13, doesn't speak of himself or of, uh, his speech doesn't come from himself. Um, and, and so uh, this whole idea here is uh, the Holy Spirit does, um, is a servant, right? Just like Eliezer was. Uh, the Holy Spirit is our comforter, a counselor, and so he came and he he gave gifts to Rebecca and, and took took him with her, um, and he was there to guard her on her journey back. Um, the Holy Spirit brings us to the Father and the Son, and it is the Son of Promise. Yeshua is the Son of Promise. He is the he had a miraculous birth. He was sacrificed willingly, and so we see all these types tied together in this story. Um, and then on the other side, we're kind of like Rebecca. Rebecca uh, is an interesting name. Um, it has to do with being tied together. And so the, the letter Tav, which I have written here, the ancient letter is a cross. And you see how it comes together. It means to bring together is one of the meanings. And so the cross brings us together, just like... Uh, uh, Rebecca uh, was brought together, tied together, so to speak, made one um, and with with Isaac. Uh, we, like Rebecca, we choose to follow the Holy Spirit. 
We choose to or not to, to follow his leading. He brings us out of the word, world immediately and through the new birth into the Holy, in, in the Holy Spirit. That's how he brings us out of the world. The lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life. We still have this battle, but in a sense we are brought out of the world right away. And we're, li we're taken on this path that's leading us to the Son. Um, he guides us until we meet the Son and the Father. And so he and he will guide us until uh, the son comes back for us to claim us as his bride. And so we see these types, um, and there's some interesting ideas in in the names. Rebecca has to do with the head, or the beginning, or the first, and it has the of the house, the head of the house, the first of the house, and its fullness beheld. And so. Uh, we are seated together in the heavenlies with Christ. We're going to be the, uh, the head. God is going to exalt us uh, to judge angels. Uh, we have been given, given a, an amazingly exalted position considering who we are. It's, it's all by the grace of God. And then we, we look at Eliezer, and we see the Aleph, which is the carrier or servant, and the shepherd, the one who guides the flow, the one who leads us, and it has the power, or, you know, or makes things with the right hand, and one has the power, uh, and, and we to perceive, and plows the head. And so we're that head, we're that Rebecca, right? We're the head, he plows us. Uh, it says it's the word of God, he plants the seeds in us. And he, and it says the sword of the spirit can cut to the bone. So um, the, this letter actually means both the sword and the plow. And so uh, this, the plow is a sword for the ground. And so he plants in us and he prepares us to be uh, the head. Well, we're going to take that headship as we're seated together in the heavenlies with Christ and we judge angels. He's preparing us. And so I just uh, urge you today, if you haven't followed God before, if you haven't accepted God or the Holy Spirit, ask him to come in your life and, and, and submit to his leadership. And if you have, uh, we choose every day to follow him or not, I just urge you to, to follow him today and submit your life back to him. And he is selfless, and so um, he'll bring you to that place where you serve others selflessly in love.